Hello and welcome. I'm Tsepo Modiba and this is Buy Africa, where we focus on investment opportunities across the continent. Today, we're turning our attention to East Africa and joining me from our Nairobi studios is Ali Khan Sachu, the CEO of Rich Management. Ali Khan, uh, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, can you give thank us a synopsis of uh, what the investment of Horizon has been like for investors in the East African markets over the course of the last year or so? You know, we've, we've been in a three-year bull market at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Uh, it, the bull market started in 2012. And over that three-year time horizon, returns have been about 144% uh, in the Nairobi All Share. So it's been really very much one of the sweetest of sweet spots for equity investors to be invested in Nairobi. Tanzania joined the party last year as well and, and perform very, very strongly. And we continue to see portfolio inflows coming in, uh, looking to capture what has been a really alpha performance over three years. And even last year, we posted a near enough 20% gain in the all share. And I think we're going to see something of the same quantum this year as well. Uh, the reasons I'm bullish, bullish about East Africa, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword but essentially the lower oil price, like in South Africa, is going to be very, very stimulative, wonderfully grassroots. And I think that will further improve the economy and send us towards a 6% GDP rate here in Kenya, about which the government is quite keen on. So that sounds like it's quite an exciting time to be looking at the region uh, and to be invested in the region. Um, are you, uh, you touched on the fact that uh, we're likely to see another strong performance. Are valuations still suggesting that there's quite a bit of upside? You know, valuations uh, 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 look in line with the frontier market indices. And, uh, you know, we're talking about... Uh, trailing PEs of around 13, 14, forward PEs coming down towards 11. Mm. And, and I, so therefore, it's not a compelling story on valuations. They're nothing like Russia, for example, right. PEs of one or two, but you know, very much intact, I think. The growth story remains intact. Okay, so beyond the valuation side of things, the macroeconomic setting is conducive to, to a continuation of this uh, successful period. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think macro, macro indicators are very supportive. Obviously, there are some weak spots like tourism, but, you know, we got this much sharper oil price. It's, it's, as I said previously, it's going to improve the spending power at the bottom of the pyramid. I estimate it's going to inject up to $40 million a day once the whole fuel uh, is passed through. And I think that's going to be very supportive. And from a, <coughs> a, a market breadth perspective, um, would you say that uh, it's actually been across yeah. the board or has it been certain sectors that have shot the lights out? That, 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 that's yeah, interesting question. So this rally was really started by the big, big capitalization stocks, the likes of Safaricom, which is about 27% of the market cap of the index, uh, the big banks, um, and a number of other uh, stocks. And really, it was, it, it was these stocks that drove the rally in 2012 and 2013. And then last year, we saw broadening out uh, the insurance sector, which has been red hot. Uh, Old Mutual's uh, uh, recent majority acquisition um, in uh, UAP, which is a non-listed stock, is the culmination of a flurry of transactions in that sector. And so we saw a more of a spillover, better breath develop in the second half of last year. And this year, what's interesting is previously bombed out stocks have really put in strong performances in January. So yes, absolutely, looks constructive from that side as well. Better breadth, better, better depth in the market. If we can uh, touch a little bit on, on, on a couple stocks within the market, you touched a little bit at the beginning of the show in terms of the oil, say, oil, in terms of the oil price and, and how that would be a positive for the broader economy or mm. economies. Um, if we can touch a little bit on, on Kenya Airways, I, I know that in theory anyway, yep. this is one that would directly benefit from a lower oil, oil price. That's right. Okay, Good. yeah, interesting question. I think you know, the first thing just to mention about the oil price, it's a double-edged sword. 
Why I say it's a double-edged sword is because there's been a lot of excitement over the oil and gas sector, mm. um, in particular uh, uh, around oil fines in Turkana, etc. Mm. My concern is now clearly all this oil exploration is underwater, it's offside, it's not happening, it's not going to happen. For at my best estimate, uh, you know, it's going to delay oil extraction up to 48 to 60 months. And I think therefore, you know, we're, we're getting the benefit on one side, but at the same time, um, you know, the government was betting large on oil and gas infrastructure. I think they've got to relook at that. Um, going to your uh, secondary question about specific stocks, Kenya Airways has rebounded 27% uh, in January alone so far, mm. trying to play catch up with, as you pointed out, a worldwide airline stock rally, which has been directly and inversely correlated to the price of oil. Mm. Kenya Airways has had several challenges. Most of all, it supersized its, its capacity at a time when we got hit by a string of Al Shabaab attacks. We had the Ebola virus. There just wasn't uh, the bums on seats that were needed uh, 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 in order to, to make the most use of the capacity. But I think, you know, on balance, it's so bombed out, this price. Uh, everything is baked into it. That's why we're getting such a positive price rate reaction. You know, I would like to have better visibility on the oil hedges because I think they're high, yeah. I think they're at the wrong price, and I'm not sure how quickly they fall off. But the basic underlying story is a powerful one. There is more competition, but this share is, is, is egregiously underpriced, emerging out of a disequilibrium, and therefore has further to go. Okay. I, I mean, uh, we do know that operationally, um, the business has struggled um, beyond the fact that oil prices were seemingly quite high. Um, are you confident that operationally we may see some positive changes going forward, or, or is that a remaining concern? That, that's, that's an interesting question. Obviously, we had a change of guard in the CEO suite uh, not too long ago. Uh, Bouvi uh, is now the new CEO. Titus, uh, totemic African Airways man, stepped, uh, has gone to RVR, I think. Um, and, you know, we had a first half results which were pretty, there was plenty of sticker shock. I, you know, there was a very big number uh, was declared there. And, you know, on balance, I think what's happened here is that the incoming CEO, like any CEO around the world, threw everything, the baby, the dishwater and everything into those first half results. Yes. And in order to show an improvement, so I think, you know, we're going to see an improvement in the numbers. We're going to we're seeing a change of direction, a refocus of the business. But, you know, it isn't what it was. 10 years ago, when to fly to the DRC from Nairobi, economy class cost me $3,000. You know, those days of super normal returns are gone. There's much more competition. We have Emirates, Qatar, all parked at our airports. We have Ethiopian, uh, which is being very aggressive. Rwanda Air coming for Kenya always is lunch. It's a different landscape, but I think on balance, if I look at the whole thing, I think the share price has further headroom because of this disequilibrium that I was talking about that's been there for quite a while. Okay. Um, any other stocks that would benefit directly from a lower oil price? So, so I think the two big stocks to keep an eye out, out of course, Safaricom. And if you look back at Safaricom results, you know, this is a mass market service. It's got 20 million customers. If those customers, by my estimate, are a dollar a day better off, right. um, uh, it's going to make a significant impact on Safaricom's bottom line. So I like Safaricom. Uh, it's the bellwether stock. I think it targets 20. Uh, that's about a 33.33% upside this year in terms of capital appreciation. East African Breweries, which is uh, majority owned by Diageo PLC. This is the big Tusker Lager. Um, uh, it, it is the dominant uh, uh, business in this region. Yeah. I think they're also going to benefit. Plus, they are circling. They're lapping some very tough numbers. So you're going to see some good earnings in February. It's trading at 315, 300 or thereabouts. Put your stop. It goes to 400. Uh, before year end. And then finally, just to touch on the banks, you know, we've had v a great deal of innovation in the mobile money space. Our banks are very well correlated to GDP. I think, you know, one can pick something like CFC Stanbic, which is 
very cheap on a price earnings ratio. Um, one can look at Equity Bank because of the innovation that's expected this year. But you know, you can pretty much choose and make a good case uh, for, for the banking sector. And if you are, you know, if you don't want too much beta in the portfolio, you're probably better off looking at the banks. Okay. Um, that's actually an, an interesting take on it. So, so these are industries that uh, not necessarily are oil as an input, but um, by virtue of, of the broader economy benefiting and consumers benefiting, they'll uh, benefit from a loyal mm. price. Absolutely. Okay. Um, if we can switch gears a little bit and, and uh, touch a little bit on one that I find interesting, certainly, um, and uh, that's in the cement sector, um, Bamburi Cement. Any, any thoughts on, on that one? Cement sector is very, very interesting. Um, yeah, we've got about four. Comp we got three companies there: Bamburi uh, Cement, which is the which is Lafarge, is the majority shareholder. Okay. We have Arthi River Mining, which I would prefer over Bamburi simply because it's, I feel it's better managed and uh, there's more juice for the equity shareholders. Look, you know, there's a big infrastructure bet on going on in this region. I was driving up and down the Mombasa Nairobi Road. That railway, the new railway is being built at a tremendous clip. Therefore, I think we're going to see above trend cement consumption. And, you know, I absolutely agree with you. I think the cement sector is one where investors need to be, uh, uh, to be long off. And just to touch on one other point, it's tangential. Uh, Dangote Cement, of course, has been breathing down, uh, br uh, feeling up the collar of a lot of our cement companies. But I think uncertainty in Nigeria, an equity market which is the worst performing in the world, a Naira which is hitting lows, is displacing money to East Africa and South. But more than that, probably slows down Dangote's expansion plans and therefore makes a better case for these two cement companies which I mentioned. Thanks to my guest, Ali Khan Sachu from Rich Management. That's all from Buy Africa this week. Remember to follow me on Twitter, that's at Mudiba underscore Tepo, or at CNBC Africa, and use the hashtag Buy Africa to talk to us. From myself and the team, goodbye.